at that time, you didn't have anything to do. You didn't have any place to go uh, but to a ball game. And on Sundays, Rick Wood would be overflowing. And uh, whenever we played night games, we'd have nice crowds, but that was it. And we had a good team. We had Willie Mays and Piper Davis, Alonzo Perry. It was a great league, too. Yeah, we won the championship in 48. We tried to bring a little class and honor to, to the city by our conduct and uh, the way we carried ourselves. And we, we realized we were professionals, so we dressed as the professionals. We acted as the professionals. Uh, these players were inspiration to kids playing on baseball fields all across Birmingham. Uh, the work that they did in, in their uh, sports arena opened the doors for many uh, other individuals, and we want to recognize them today. It's being designed to attract kids of all ages, of, of, of all races, to really come and have uh, the experience that these players have gone through, uh, and to tell their life story in the field of baseball. And it's going to be designed to attract uh, everyone to come here, and it's open to everyone. And we want to make sure that this becomes a vital part of the baseball experience when fans come out to see the Birmingham Barons play as well. Well, I had a friend that had played in the Negro Leagues, and uh, I uh, was very disturbed that very little was being done to preserve the history of black baseball in America. There, to locate the ball players, to find the artifacts, to do research, preserve the history. And when the city came to us to partner with them to build the Negro Southern League Museum, um, my thought was to we need to tell the story of black baseball in America through the eyes of Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> I, I often get asked the question in that, if you built a museum on Negro League baseball history, where would you choose? And Birmingham is the most logical choice for me for several reasons. Number one, the Black Barons had the longest running history of any team in professional black baseball. Secondly, there's more former Negro League ball players live in the Birmingham area than anywhere in the United States, so the, the legends of Negro League baseball are here in Birmingham. Thirdly, we have Rickwood Field. Uh, Rickwood Field was the home of the Birmingham Barons and the home of the Birmingham Black Barons. In addition, you have the Birmingham Industrial League for all of the semi-pro ball that was played over the years, all the amateur baseball. Uh, Birmingham has had the highest level of semi-professional baseball uh, in the United States. I really commend the city of Birmingham for uh, building the museum. It's been a long time coming. Mayor Bell and his staff have done a phenomenal job of putting the project together so that, you know, not only will be, we be able to preserve the legacy of all of the ball, of Negro League Baseball in the United States, but we're going to be able to continually do research in that to add to the body of knowledge. The museum that people will be able to visit here We'll have, we'll have phenomenal exhibits, and the exhibits start in 1897 with the Birmingham Unions. We go through the Black Barons, we talk about integration and Jackie Robinson. We look at civil rights and how civil rights impacted baseball in the Birmingham area. Like downtown, you only had a little small section where we were restaurants and hotels. Uh, you couldn't go in certain places, you go in to buy a hat, you couldn't try it on, suit, you just had all of this stuff. In spite of all of this, we were able to achieve something, to succeed, and we didn't lose our dignity. I've had the opportunity to meet some of these guys and talk to them and sort of hear some of their stories. And, and really, those firsthand experiences, along with Dr. Ravel, who is sort of you know, the ultimate tour guide through the history of the Negro Leagues, uh, has been has been pretty exciting and, and frankly it's been humbling to understand uh, these players and, and everything they went through uh, you know, for the love of the game of baseball. The museum traces the history of black baseball all the way from the very beginning to, uh, to when the first leagues were formed, um, all the way through civil rights, through integration, to what's happening today in baseball and that uh, around the United States. I feel like we're responsible for designing the experience of going through that museum. There's an established, we know what the story is, we know what the content is. Uh, Dr. Ravel has been really integral in uh, his contribution of all the artifacts and all the kind of, you know, the content. And our job is to take that content 
and arrange it in a, in a thoughtful way to create an experience and to help and let that experience tell the story of these players, their journey, you know, their struggles uh, over the course of time and the story of baseball at the same time. It's a beautiful thing for the fellows to have something of their own to say that this is mine. And it's a, it's a good thing. It's been a long time coming. It's, it's something we've been waiting on for seven years. I played, I'm 73 oh. years old. We've been waiting on it to be built. Only thing I, I regret a little bit, we, we were just, I think we just born a little too early, <laughs> rather than late. <laughs> the Negro League history and civil rights history in a lot of ways are intertwined, and I think this is the perfect place to tell that story. We're doing continuing research, finding more artifacts, collecting more history. We will be changing the exhibits out on a regular basis. So somebody could come to the museum, six months later they're liable to see new artifacts. There'll be lots of new research. when they We'll have a research library right there in the museum where they can sit down and uh, pull up the computer. Well, my grandfather played with the Birmingham Baron, Black Barons back in the 20s. We have rosters for all the Barons teams, statistics, league standings. Uh, team records, profiles on over 250 of the, the greatest African American ball players from, that played with the Black Barons and in this area. Thousands of photographs. Uh, we have every known photograph of the Black Barons and Negro Southern League baseball and that. So there's just a, uh, it should be a phenomenal experience. Whether you're a baseball enthusiast and want to do hardcore research, to if you if you know nothing about baseball, it'll be you'll have the time of your life and can't wait to come back.